Hey, hey, what's up, guys? Hi, guys. Well, we're back for our weekly podcast. Yep, podcast number three. So today's topic is child's play, interventions for big hearts and little minds. Yeah. Um, it we'll, can also be used for teens and adults as well. Yes, everything we're talking about tonight pretty much will work for parents working mm-hmm. with children, uh, clinicians working with kids. We wanted to put together this podcast because it sounded like something that everyone was interested in. So we wanted to sort of blend our backgrounds in that. Yep. Plus, we have a teacher guest. Yep, it works for teachers. It can work for, if you're a parent, it can work for your own children. Um, if you're a clinician, it works for you. Um, you, as a child yourself or just an adult yourself, can use it as well. Um, some of the things that we use in here, like we use in our own individual lives. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's kind of what we wanted to talk about today, was providing interventions that maybe you have heard of or haven't heard of um, to share with everybody. Basically, if you're going to see your family over the holidays, you can use everything we're going yes. to tell you about. I have recommended a lot of these interventions for adult clients when they're seeing family members that they don't maybe not necessarily want to see. So Exactly. Not that we have any of those. Of course. I love my family. But we want to start off with some big news as well, right? Yep. So, I guess that's me. All right. So, I'll I'll roll with this one. So, we are actually Mm -hmm. rebranding. OCRR, Orange County Relationship Restoration, is a little long. Yep. So, we are going to be session well. So, we are a community that is going to be built for whether you're a mental health clinician Mm -hmm. or you're a parent trying to find out how to work with your kids, you're a spouse trying to find out how to have better discussions with your spouse. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're going to work seeking, for everyone. Yes. If you're seeking your own therapy, if you're currently in therapy, um, basically it's just a community. It's a platform for all of us to be together, to support each other. So that way nobody in this field or just kind of in life in general ever feel alone. Um, and so that's what we are hoping is that we can come together and walk, basically do life together mm-hmm. um, whenever we need to and ask questions and support each other and give ideas and just honestly just yeah. guide each other through this life. And that's why we try to build podcasts that are educational, right? Mm. From no matter what walk of life you're in. Because yep. that's really what we've been for from the start. Absolutely. Is this, this walk is all different. Our paths mm-hmm. are all different. Yeah. We have to trust the process. And there we are. Yeah. It's why we do this together. We don't do it alone. Mm-hmm. Um, because marketing can be a very lonely process. And that's why we've teamed up. And we've always supported each other. We both have a community of MFT friends as well. And loved ones and teacher friends and friend friends and all those people so we hope that you guys can come join us um because we would love to have you guys here exactly we also have some other pretty crazy news and this is something that we've really worked hard on fred yen has helped us a ton with this go brother um and we are super super blessed about this new news so please kick it off so if you guys can't join us on thursday nights at eight o'clock which i understand is people's bedtimes you're tired from work you have lives you maybe want to watch tv um, and so we've provided this podcast on iTunes, Spotify, and Google Play. Um, and so if you are ever needing something to listen to on the drive to work, or you're traveling, or on the airplane, or just whenever, um, feel free to sign up. Or um, it's like, free download. Yeah, free download. Not sign up. Everything is going to be free to access. Yeah. Um, so you let us know what you want to hear on the podcast, mm-hmm. and we're going to be putting those out. So we've already got one up, um, and so every week we'll continue to build. Exactly. So that's our two big news. We're rebranding and we have a podcast on all those different platforms. We're so. official podcast. Yes. Facebook so official. <laughs> Perfect. But yeah. So just quick, really quick. Who am I? I'm Adam Luke. I'm an associate marriage and family therapist. Um, currently right now, full time I work in substance abuse and alcohol, drug addiction. Um, I also work at Hope uh, Community Counseling Center. Um, and that's in Anaheim, mm-hmm. um, along with being an adjunct professor. So, uh, you know lots of things. That's me. That's the hats I wear. Yep. I'm Judy Yen. I'm also an associate marriage family therapist. Uh, I also am a full time high school teacher. I also am an adjunct professor at Hope International. I also um, see clients at Hope Counseling Center, and then also have a private practice in Fullerton. So, in this field, it's very rare that you just do one thing. So. Yes, you're gonna wear multiple hats, and that's again what our podcast should help you do so please feel that you're not alone in that we're all trying to make it towards our dreams yes we're all hustling yes hustle hustle yep so So thank you guys for joining us yes should we kick it off yes so we have three fun interventions that we use with children um and again it also uses you can use it with anybody 
Um, and so if you have used any of these, please hop on, make comments, maybe give suggestions. If you have other ways of using it, please um, share your ideas with us and we'll also talk about them um, and we'll answer questions if there are any at the end um, and we'll address those. So to we'll start, start it off, we'll, we'll definitely get rolling to that. Okay. I just want to also, the reason why we thought this was an important podcast. Oh, that's important. Yes. Um, <laughs> just because I've, first of all, I've been hearing more from clinicians um, Judy and I do have a presence at Hope International, and so when we are in the counseling center, uh, talking to trainees, mm-hmm. people through all sorts of hours, whether it's their first 10 hours or their 300 hours or they're about to graduate, um, there is a big worry and concern when you're a clinician starting out, what do I do with kids? Right. Right? As if there's some sort of little gremlin. Uh, I'll, they I'll may. Admit, yes, that's true. I will admit, in my practice, I don't really see anyone under the age of 12. So even though I'm like close to being done with my 3,000 hours, there are still times where I feel kind of maybe unequipped to work with children. And so having this toolbox of interventions um, has been really helpful and like will be helpful. And so I just like the fact that we can use these um, for all ages. But those of you mm-hmm. that are going to work with children and that's your thing, um, hopefully some of these can help you with that. And again, for the parents, this is also going to work for you. So you want me to start it off? Yes. Perfect. So we have the Worry Eater. So the Worry Eater is an awesome intervention along with being a great toy. So especially when we we think about like uh, our kids from a starting point, maybe they've got a little lammy or a little giraffe, a blanket. This can also be a part of their journey. So you don't have to, they don't have to have this to be emotionally safe. Right. Um, but this is definitely something that's very useful for kids who have experienced traumas. Um, nightmares. Uh, nightmares, grief, all sorts of things. Mm-hmm. Um, and so this one is actually Judy's. It is. So what... But I also bought a similar one for my nephew. And so when my nephew visits um, and he spends the night at my house, he never wants to bring his own worry eater because he's afraid that if he brings it to my house, my dog will chew it up, which is very likely. Um, and so he will always borrow mine. And so he always sleeps with it because he sleeps in my room when he spends the night. And so that is, it's, it's half mine, but he's also, I would say, half owner of that one as well. Perfect. Yeah. So what I love about using these is, that, again, uh, children are are very interesting how they'll build little narratives in their lives, yeah. right? They can be afraid of certain things. Um, again, we may not know why they have a fear yeah. about it, but they can. So the cool thing about the worry eaters is they normally have like hidden pockets, or this one isn't so hidden. It's its mouth. <laughs> right across its mouth. <laughs> and so you can slide that open. And the reason why they call them worry eaters um, is because what I like to do as a clinician is I'll take a post-it note. And maybe we'll talk about it. So maybe it's fears of, I had a client once that was really afraid of dogs because of something they experienced. Yeah. And so we were able to take those fears because those fears to a child, especially are legitimate fears. Mm-hmm. I think sometimes as adults, we try to uh, diminish minimize. and yeah. minimize. Oh, it's, it's okay. It's okay. Or mm-hmm. dismiss. Dismiss. And so we really set them up as kids to compartmentalize, right? And that's yeah. not what we want. We want them to process what they're going through. And so they're able to put that worry in here, Mm -hmm. right? Um, I've also had uh, kids who, um, again, if they're processing grief, loss of a grandparent, loss of a parent, um, we've taken quotes that they might know of, of grandma and grandpa, and placed it in this so that something that they can walk around with and they can have like, oh, that thought of what grandpa used to say or what dad used to say or Mm -hmm. mom. And it allows them to process in a way that they can process. Kids are highly uh, uh, tactile. tactile. And so being able to have something like this um, that's going to allow them to continue to process out in the world Mm -hmm. uh, and do it in a safe manner, I think is a really, really good thing. It serves as a container for them. And so sometimes kids feel safer or more comforted if it's like okay mom and dad i'm gonna put my worry in here or my nightmare or my fears um and then can you hold on to them Mm. and so they can pass over the worry eater to you um or to a clinician or whoever they feel comfortable with so then they know it's like it allows them to kind of empty their head of the worry Mm -hmm. because i think that a lot of times when we have fears and anxiety it's all in our heads and to be able to like write on a piece of paper and then put it somewhere um, and then give it to somebody else, it's kind of removing it from them. Mm-hmm. So it gives them space to have other more positive thoughts. Yeah. 
especially uh, when I'm working in therapy and I have several sessions, yeah. um, we can take certain ones of those out. Go, well, you know, you're not so scared of that anymore. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to make space in there, right? Oh, yeah. we don't need to carry that anymore. But we move on. So mm -hmm. this is definitely something that I recommend. Um, I've also had great, great success with this with kids that are on the spectrum. Okay. Um, because, again, they'll have narratives, cognitions mm -hmm. that they're very focused on, right? And instead of just being like, stop it. It doesn't right. work that way. For them, they may need to put it here. Mm -hmm. And so it's good for them to have that. And then again, as we work away from it, we get rid of it. Yeah. So that's very healthy. So worry eaters, mm -hmm. um, we're going to have a link to them. You can find them pretty much everywhere. Mm -hmm. I like also how they're all, they have very different, they're different ones. different. And they're all, I think the one I got my nephew, I, is it, I think it has little horns. Maybe. And yes, there's also I've like seen a, that one. There's a pirate one yeah. with um, like an eye patch. There's so many different ones. And they're yes. so creative and colorful. Um, so I just think it's a really good space for mm -hmm. children and adults to just kind of unstuff themselves and like stuff the worry eater. Yep. But then they can also unstuff the worry eater um, once those are no longer fears of theirs. Yes. So if you want to get I got mine on Amazon. It might be a little bit cheaper there by a few dollars. Um, but there's also other links that you can find them as well. Perfect. Yeah. That's the first one. One down, two more to go. Um, the next one that we've been using a lot lately um, at the Hope Counseling Center, um, that's actually the first time I ever heard about it because another therapist was using it with, I think, an adult client. Um, and so it doesn't just work with children. I think Adam can speak to how you can use it more with children. But I've mostly just used it for adults. So what it is, is that it looks like that. It's basically kinetic sand. Um, usually you'd want a bucket that probably can, um, uh, what's it called? Like keep the moisture in i just mm. didn't have one right now so i'm using a, a, a potato chip bowl <laughs> from home goods okay so what it is <laughs> is that we would love you guys to sponsor us <laughs> exactly <laughs> we love home goods um, so it is very if you are a sensory um mm. tactile seeker this is really helpful so the way i use it with adults is that it basically looks like this it looks like sand um but it does this weird like thing where it's able to just like fall through your hands um, it's not messy at all. There's there's no cleanup. And you pretty much can just hold it and do whatever you want with it. So, for example, someone like me, like if I'm anxious, um, just playing with it and touching it um, makes me feel calmer. It mm -hmm. allows me to stabilize, to emotionally regulate. And so some clients, when they're doing this the whole time and talking to you, they're actually able to focus more because they're able to yes. hold it in their hands and allows them to focus and so that's how I've used it with adults. And so just to piggyback on what you're saying, I, when I first sat down when we were getting ready for this, getting everything set up, <laughs> it's, um, it's funny because she sort of caught me. I was just like, just, just letting, it, it. <laughs> letting it fall out of my hands. And so again, from a sensory point of view, it's an amazing, different um, experience. Almost just the sensation of feeling in your hands is weird. Mm -hmm. um, so using it with kids so i i had a blessing in my life uh to work with a place called a quarter blue they're based out of orange uh, california and they work with victims of sexual abuse primarily children um i was able to do 500 hours there my first 500 hours wayne brazil was my supervisor amazing supervisor um and what was crazy is again when you're trying to work with children in anything, um, your logic-based brain of like, oh, let's think cognitive is not necessarily going to be their style of how their brain functions. And so when you have something like kinetic sand, especially for victims um, of traumas, uh, this sensory capability of it, of having it fall through your hands or just experience something like this, was able to bring them to a place where they could start processing. Now with kids, you don't necessarily process by saying, you know, this person hurt me and that hurt me and now my emotions, I'm going to be able to work through that. It's more like uh, providing the space for allowing children to be children. Mm -hmm. um, and again, some might be listening to this going, well, my kids never experienced something that bad. Why would I have to do this? Again, it's a great way of getting kids to just calm down, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes when you're an adult and you've been with this kid for eight hours straight, you're losing your mind, you'd like to go to sleep, um, we'll find ourselves in positions we don't want to be in as adults. Maybe it, maybe you yell at your kid, maybe 
Um, yeah, you you your break you yeah. yeah you break your concentration for a little bit. What's crazy is that if you have a real fidgety kid, you can give them this kinetic sand, a lot of sand. and basically they will sit there and play. The other yeah. cool thing is they can use their action figures in it. Mm-hmm. They can put Legos in it, and it's not gonna again spread sand out all over your house. I mean, if you're paying attention. We are on Judy's couch. Yeah, and it's not, like, a piece fell down, but it's, like, it doesn't stick to anything. It's not yeah. messy at all. Um, and that's the great thing is cleanup is a snap. Um, also, what she was talking about with trying to keep the moisture in it, because it, it, there is a, a moist uh, thing about keeping it pliable, mm-hmm. but it's not something that, again, you, you got oiliness or you right. have to worry about staining fabrics. Something I love is if you just go to Walmart and get like the, uh, what is it? Like a Tupperware. Like just a, get a Tupperware thing. Yeah, with the sealer. What is it called? I don't even know what it's called. My mom has a bunch of them. Um, Basically, it will work in anything. I've yeah. seen people put... In buckets. Oh, um, uh, Ikea has a lot of different containers that you mm-hmm. can put it in. I know that, you know, there's a trainee at Hope right now that has it in a uh, glad, Gladware or a... Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, it's Tupperware. a Gladware Tupperware thing. Mm-hmm. Cheap. Um, you can put it in a Rubbermaid, uh, if you want to have something larger. Mm -hmm. Again, in play therapy with kids, there's a big thing called sand tray. And sand tray is an awesome form of therapy because it allows kids to utilize toys along with sand and sort of cognitively project, um, onto what they're trying to do. So, Mm -hmm. uh, it's a big, it's psychodynamic actually. In the way that they can work through traumas by maybe how the action figures talk to each other, what the cars are doing, all sorts of things. So kinetic sand, huge part. Again, if you have a child that uh, may be autistic or on the spectrum, um, sometimes when they're very, very frustrated, just playing with the sand will help calm them down. Um, I've actually had parents that I've worked with, I've said, put it in a Ziploc bag. Carry if they with them. if they get triggered in the car, they get triggered somewhere in a restaurant. Um, that way, you're able to provide it to them. And say, hey, just play with this. And again, I'm not really big as a therapist into distracting kids, uh-huh. so I want it to be intentional. Right. So yeah, if they're triggered, if they're having a hard time, it's a hard day. Give it to them so that they can play uh-huh. in that way of calming themselves. I don't want it to be sort of like an iPad where you right. just oh just. Throw it at them if they're making noise. That's that's not what right. this is about. This is actually a it's deliberate nice. intervention. Good. So that's that one. Nice. And it all, again, it also works with adults as well. Like me just sitting here listening to him, I'm almost like not listening to you. Sorry. No problem. Because I feel calm and relaxed. And I'm like, oh, this is nice. It is. Yes. It is. And but, again, you don't need a huge bag. Mm-hmm. I got you mine know, also you, on Amazon. I think for $14.99. Yep. And uh, it's three pound bag, and you just watch two grown adults Play with share it. Yep. So, uh, want to go on to the next one? Yep. So our third one, which is actually one of my favorites, um, I do it a lot with my students. I, I, they just enjoy it. It's super simple. So we have bubbles. Um, I'm sure some of you guys have heard about bubbles. So when you think of bubbles, Adam, what do you think of? Man, when you handed these to me, I uh, I immediately went to my childhood. Man, I, I couldn't help but was like, I can't wait to just blow bubbles. Like right. that, it seems uh, it it just elicits memories of, of being free and having fun. Mm-hmm. And so that's part of it. So one, we're hoping that most people, adults, children, teens, whatever, um, are able to connect like positive childhood memories or just like being a kid. I think mm-hmm. aside from just being a child, I think it's. A memory of just having fun and mm. when life was maybe a little bit easier or stress-free we didn't have bills all those things and it's just like it reminds me of like laughter um, and so a lot of times we might use it for that and so there's two ways that I've used bubbles one I've done it where I'll tell a client who has maybe a lot of anxiety and a lot mm. of um, to-do lists or stressors or all these things that they're worried about I'll have them blow bubbles Oop, that one didn't work <laughs> And then I'll have them identify what each of those bubbles represent worry-wise. So as they're blowing the bubbles, they can go ahead and pop each one. Like, oh, okay. There's my bills. There's my husband. I'm just kidding. There's my job. <laughs> just There's end the husband? My okay. negative <laughs> naughty dog who po- drives me nuts. Okay, so all those things that we're just worried about. Just make them up. They don't have to be. <laughs> yep. 
it, it'll and, be real. Um, and so it's a very like visual way of being like, okay, pop, 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 pop. Those are my stressors. Like mm. I have identified them. I'm eliminating them. Yes, they still exist, but at least a lot of the worries is out of my brain. Um, and it's like laid out into the sky or the room and I'm able to feel more control of popping them. The other way that I love using this, and I've used it in session with adults also, I've used it also with couples who are fighting in session. Mm. Maybe not fighting, but it got really um, intense in session. Okay. I'll stop them, give them each a couple of bubble sets, and be like, okay, go ahead and blow, which I know sounds weird. Um, but what I want them to do is that when you blow bubbles correctly, it actually teaches you calm breathing. Mm. So a lot of times when we get anxious, most of us do short breath like <laughs> like that. And that actually leads into hyperventilation or it's actually, it will increase our anxiety. So mm -hmm. what we're supposed to be doing is breathing from our stomach and being able to take deep, slow breaths. And so if you think about it, if you blow a bubble and you go, wow. a big lot, you tell the client, blow as long as you can to get the most extended bubbles or the biggest bubble, depending on mm -hmm. the type of um, liquid you have in here. And so it really slows down the breathing. They pause, they blow out for a while, then they pause again and they blow out again. And so it really just promotes calm breathing, uh, which I think is so opposite of what we do when we're mm -hmm. anxious. Because some people, I've heard from a lot of clients, I don't know how to deep breathe. Like, I don't yep. even know what that means. I'm like, okay, well, do you know how to blow bubbles? And they're like, well, yeah. And I'm like, okay, well, then let's try it. Do it with me, and I'll do it with them. So that's kind of how I've used it. And then usually at the end of the year, I give I gift them to all my um, AP Psych students. And they, they, they like it because they're like, oh, we get to play. Um, and I always say, okay, blow your bubbles before you're anxious for your test. And they tend to like it. Yeah. That's how I've used it. I think... And I, I'm hoping you heard what Judy was saying and the fact that it's an amazing grounding technique, right? Mm -hmm. So, especially, you know, major keywords right now is mindfulness. Yes. And, and this is a great way to be mindful, mm -hmm. but also to ground, ground yourself. Um, I love how you use it with couples because it is also another thing that I have found that you cannot blow bubbles with your spouse or partner and not start smiling or laughing. Because you're going to have instances where people look like they can't blow bubbles. Or, right. or you're going to have a ton of bubbles and then you're going to have not that <laughs> many bubbles. Right. So it's an awesome form of doing that. Now going back to triggered kids, right? Kids are having a bad day. Um, like when I, see, when I see kids sometimes in restaurants that they're just, they're having a bad yeah. day, right? And whether that parent is deciding to ignore them or that parent is trying to find a way for them to relax this is a great way of like hey here's bubbles mm -hmm. let's go outside real quick i think it's a great way of teaching kids that they don't have to have it, it doesn't have to be a consequence to go outside right because we don't want to teach kids that they can't remove themselves from situations mm -hmm. where they're frustrated they're upset and they're screaming because if anything judy and i know is working with couples and going through the gottman program there are deliberate times where you guys need to separate. Absolutely. Take and, a breather. And we can teach our kids that. Yeah. And sometimes people don't realize, like, yeah, we can teach our kids that they can be independent to mm -hmm. leave a situation and come back. Right. And advocate for themselves. Mm -hmm. And voice what they need. And I remember a parent once telling me that had difficulty with bringing their children to restaurants was, you know, before I'd have to drag them out kicking and screaming. But when we had introduced this intervention in a family session mm -hmm. and going forward, kid triggered, okay, you know, let's go outside, let's blow bubbles real quick. It popped them out of it. Mm -hmm. It really did. And it, it's something that can be used for your benefit. It doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be. Super easy. These are cheap too. Exactly. I, I mean, it doesn't really cost anything. And again, uh, if you have multiple kids, it only teaches them all to sort yeah. of, okay, this is how we can regulate ourselves. Exactly. Emotional so, regulation is huge. We, we need kids that can self-soothe. Yep. And that starts with modeling it mm -hmm. and also providing it a space to exist. Exactly. So those were our three interventions. I do want to end this session, though, with mm -hmm. something that I felt sort of called upon to talk about with parents. And that is... Um, 
the biggest thing I've got, I, I had a phone call of a potential referral. I was talking to this, this parent. And the parent said, how do I communicate with my kids? Um, and this, this parent, um, there is no shame in this. I yeah. get this question. You have gotten this right. question. This question exists. What I want to combat is how socially we've sort of either been raised or we've been told how to talk to kids. Mm -hmm. And I think that is, we, you know, oh, you have to talk to kids in a certain way. If anything that I've really found, kids want genuine connection and genuine conversation. Yeah. So how do you talk to kids just as you would talk to your spouse right. or you would talk to your mom or your own dad? Your best friend. Your best friend. Now, don't hear that there isn't information we would limit from kids, right? Of There's, There's certain boundaries. conversations and boundaries that are safe to have at a different time that they don't need to talk about. Mm -hmm. now, if you need me to spell it out, it's it's maybe sexually explicit conversations, right. violence, <laughs> um, natural disasters. Right. There's certain things. But uh, moving back to that natural disaster part, I mean, our hearts go out for North Carolina and for everything they're going through right now with hurricanes. Mm -hmm. And kids ask these questions. Yeah. Mommy, Daddy, what's what's going on? And saying things like, well, you don't have to worry about that right now. Mm -hmm. Doesn't necessarily put them at ease. Right. It really makes them feel as if they're not of value to be a part of this conversation. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk to our kids, talk to your kids how you wish your parents would talk to you. Mm -hmm. Talk to your kids in a manner that is genuine um, and is safe again in conversation, but that's how you talk to your kids. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, guys, as someone who works with kids, kids want to talk to their parents. Yeah. They just want parents to show up and be present. Which is like, which is all what all of us want when we're interacting with people. Exactly, I, and it's not um, even teenagers, adolescents. Yeah, they, want, they want connection too. They may not they, seem like they want to, but trust me, like teaching high school students, they absolutely want connection and attachment. I mean, and it's really hard because you'll hear maybe your teenager or your twelve-year-old will say things like, I, "I want you to go away," or "I hate you," Bo "You're bothering me. Stop bothering me." What Judy is also hinting at is kids are sponges. Mm -hmm. And so while they may not be talking to you, they're listening to everything you're yes. saying. They're very aware. And so you have the power on what they get to hear. Do they get to hear you shaming them, judging them, condescending them? Or do they hear you saying, okay, I, I get that. I still love you, though. I'm here. Talk. Go to your kids' strengths, man. Especially when you're talking to your kids and maybe they're being difficult. Don't go to what they're they're struggling with, what their challenges are. Go to what they're good at. Yeah. So, Absolutely. sorry to take it super deep, but I think in this conversation and in these podcasts, this is what we need to be talking about. Yeah. They're our next generation. We need to nurture them and love them and see them, like really see them, um, and not ever hold them back from being everything that they could be. There's a lot of hurt in this world. But, right. But believe it or not, whether how educated or non-educated we are we have the same potential mm -hmm. to bring kindness absolutely to our kids and, and show love and compassion mm -hmm. so good hey Thank you guys i don't know are there any comments or yeah questions? we haven't really been checking in have we brother can you see that or no he's probably been over there uh no, <laughs> no questions heather said you bought her the worry eater i did buy heather worry eater for her i think it was her birthday or maybe it was, i think it was christmas Aww. Okay, I don't, yeah, I think that was it. Thanks, Heather. She's also on her trip. I hope you and David and Madison um, landed safely. But thank you guys for joining us tonight. Um, again, if you couldn't join us live, um, please feel free to listen on iTunes, Google Play, and Spotify. Yes. All right, guys. It was good talking to you. Have a wonderful week. Bye. Bye.